Blackmagic just broke the internet with the news about their cinema cameras. But in this video, we're going to explore the new Pixar 6, how much it costs, what this may mean for the pocket line, the pros, the cons, and whether this box camera has been worth your wait. Let's be honest, there's nothing more exciting in the world than when Blackmagic drops new cinema cameras. Yes, we got three, but the Pixar 6 is most likely the one many of us can afford at $2,995 US dollars. At this price point, its only competition on the market is, well, it doesn't have any. Maybe the 6K Pro or the 6K full frame, but outside of Blackmagic design, there certainly isn't anything from Sony, Canon, Panasonic, Fujifilm, or any Chinese brand that makes cinema cameras competing at this price point. They're all much more expensive with less features. If you follow this channel, you would know that I recently sold off my Ursa Mini Pro 12K. I just prefer smaller, cheaper, more powerful and adaptable cameras. But I'm also very curious to know what you guys prefer and what you think. So let me know in the comments below. Also, be sure to subscribe as I will try to get my hands on one of these cameras as soon as possible so that I can share my test footage and my thoughts and comparison videos with you. So yeah, it's fair to say I'm really excited about the brand new Blackmagic camera. That's right, the wait is finally over. We have the box camera that we can rig to our heart's content and it's most likely everything we've asked and hoped for. Just quickly though, as part of the big announcements, I just want to mention that Blackmagic has brought out a new EVF. I've owned a lot of EVFs over the years, but the Ursus was by far the best for the money. And this new one looks even better and has far superior rigging options and works natively with all the new cameras and probably some of the older ones, with both the power and the 1920 by 1080 image signal being delivered via USB-C. And I'll let you know why this could be an even bigger game changer in a minute. At only $16.95 before taxes with all the rigging, that's a bargain for an OLED EVF. And I'm sure someone smarter than me will figure out some sort of conversion box to adapt and use this EVF with other SDI or HDMI enabled only cameras. Okay, let's get back to the Pixar 6. Now, anyone that says that they have no need for a full frame camera doesn't understand the flexibility that a multi-format sensor can deliver. But this point aside, the real killer feature for me is the Pixar's size and form factor. I remember when shooting with the Ump 12K, how unwieldy and bulky it felt when not on my shoulder. And because I have large hands and sausage fingers, I really found the recess buttons on the Ursa 12K hard to depress. The Pixar 6 is the complete opposite. The buttons appear to slightly protrude and look far more accessible. And this little thing means a lot to me as an operator. Because of its size, you could fit this in a small doctor's backpack fully built. So it appears to be a great A camera for grab and go work or even as a studio camera to replace my old recently sold Ursa 12K. And if I ever need to go bigger, then Blackmagic has solved that with the Cine line of high-res cameras, which I can rent, but that's for a separate video. The headline features of the Pixar 6 are the dual gain full frame 35mm sensor, which can shoot open gate. The same incredible frame rates as the Pocket 6K full frame. It has dual CF Express type B card slots, meaning you can record for extremely long run times. I mean, I could jam two of these in there for a total of eight terabytes. And I don't even want to advertise how long we could shoot for because I know there's some crazy director out there that would ask me to do it. The camera comes in three lens mount options. L, P, L, and E, F has a much improved camera layout, more suited to a production environment. 13 stops the dynamic range with 12-bit brawl, the same great class leading operating system, all the glory of Blackmagic Design's color science, inbuilt live streaming, a four inch touchscreen LCD on the side with controls, better mounting options built into a more durable lightweight aluminium chassis, has adopted the BPU style batteries for extremely long run times, and I have no doubt someone will design a V-mount adapter for this camera. It's just a matter of time. We also have more IO with STI, HDMI, Bluetooth, analog inputs with 48 volt phantom power, camera to cloud, and like many other cameras, includes a free copy of DaVinci Resolve Studio. With the most notable omissions being the lack of internal NDs, no adjustable screen, and no ProRes recording. These omissions will likely disappoint many people, but for me, these are easily remedied with kit-like lens adapters with drop-in filters from Poco and many other providers, which are readily available in L and PL mounts. I see the lack of an adjustable screen as a plus, not a minus, because that gives me choice over the screen, its brightness, and its size I want to use instead of having one attached to the camera, maybe in a place I don't want it or can't change it. And look, we've all complained about wanting more adaptability, right? Well, now we have it. I also believe this is why Blackmagic Design reduced the price of the video assist by $200 across the board. So even if you were to buy the most expensive Blackmagic Design video assist, the setup is still well under $4,000. And as I mentioned before, 
we have the USB-C port at the front of the camera body for the new OLED EVF. And we can only hope that that USB-C cable connected for the EVF video on power could possibly be used in the future via a firmware update to power and provide camera control to a connected video assist. Wouldn't that be cool? As for the lack of ProRes, which is an industry standard codec, I get it, but I would rather shoot raw and then convert to ProRes if I need. But in reality, without using the camera from the outside, just looking in, the only thing that I see that I don't like is the top handle. The top handle doesn't have many rigging points, but third parties will fix that in a jiffy, so it's no biggie. And to the last thing that people wanted, autofocus. For the longest time, I've been wanting it in a Blackmagic Design camera, but the reality is, technology has changed things. Now DJI has made their LiDAR AF so good and so affordable, which works so well with so many great lenses, which are now dirt cheap, thanks China, I just don't care about having it in a camera anymore. To be honest, I can't wait to get my hands on one of these and pair it with the DJI LiDAR system and some anamorphic lenses. I mean, if you said that to me 20 years ago that I could have all of this for under 8K, I would have called you a liar. That was just an impossibility. There was no budget options. And that's really who these cameras are aimed at. People who are swinging between small solo and bigger budget jobs who need an adaptable camera platform. The camera can still be stripped way back, but it can also be built out for studio work. But it's also aimed at anyone that's using the pocket line and wants to jump into the full frame world or anyone that's trying to get into filmmaking and trying to get a great value product that's actually flexible and riggable with a great image for under 3K. You can't deny even missing NDs, a flexible screen and ProRes, you are getting a lot for your money. But with a lot of people asking for a box camera now for many years, let me know if this is what you had in mind and what you think of it below. I have more content coming soon, but in the meantime, you can check out these here. Swipe up, tag your friends, like and subscribe, comment below. If I make this follow, don't let this flop.